So uh, you mentioned that you have uh, children. And one of the things that you and Asa talked about, which, you know, I thought was a really great conversation because, you know, Asa is obviously a mother. Um, I'm a new mother. And this is a topic that I just think is so important that a lot of people are loathe to talk about because, you know, the idea of discussing like anything about the adult industry and like anything about children should never like be in the same room. But I mean, we have to acknowledge that a lot of sex workers or people that work in the adult industry are also parents. So like, how do you navigate those waters? So yeah, that's a, it's a great question. And I think it's also important that most of the consumers of porn and adult industry related products and services are also parents as well, you know? And so I think, you know, having the conversation, we're not just having some special private club conversation. We're actually having a conversation about society and about really what life actually looks like. And that's, the, I think part of the challenging part is like people don't want to leave fantasy world, but in order to create fantasy and to create fantasy world really well, we should actually address real world. Right. Um, and so, you know, I think it has been so important for me to discuss being a parent as a performer, because some of the some of the things that people try to use to target and to to hurt performers is like, what are your kids going to think? And like being able to have a response to that is like, in my opinion, it's pretty fucking badass. Like, oh, I'm glad that you asked. Let me point you to this podcast where my daughter shares what she thinks, you know, um, I know you're getting sound on the other side, so. Yeah, I'm going, what I'll do is I'll mute myself when I'm not talking. Okay, um, cool. So you don't hear that. Okay. So, you know, um, and also like doxing, you can't dox anything that's already out there, right? I am a parent. I do create porn. I don't create porn with my children, <laughs> you know, um, making that clear distinction because that's, Unfortunately, that's sort of, um, it's the stigma that has been attached, right? That porn performers or people in the adult industries are perverts and perverts are pedophiles. When all of those three things can be independent of themselves. Um, but there's been that, you know, uh, how do you say it? Uh, the, um, oh, I can't think of the word, but, but anyways, where people have made that a part of our stigma that we have to be so worried about, you know, also where is a safe space to talk about your children and work? And so the way that I've, I've asked people to think about this is, what is the level of, of share that we do about with any other profession? How many people work at as a barista and come home and tell their children how many cups of coffee they made? Like, that's rare. It's, it's, it has no place and no relevance, typically. Um, and I could say that to someone who is a law enforcement officer, there's no relevance to coming home and sharing the details of the work that you do. It's not appropriate to that child. And so the same thing when it comes to adult work, people often ask like, how do you balance? How do you, how do you share with your kids the type of work that you do? And I ask them, before I ask that question, can you share with me how you share with young people in your life, the kind of work that you do? And they're like, well, I'm just a banker. Okay. well. Talk to me, how much do you, every night that you come home, do you share with your, they don't really wanna know that. Oh, same for my kids. They're really not interested um, in aspects of my work. And if they were, I would be able to explain it to them at the most age appropriate way. So if my two year old says, which he does, mommy working, yes, mommy has to go upstairs and work now. That's the exact same response I give him when I have to go see a therapy client. It's the same thing that I use when I'm seeing a kink a kink client. Nothing has changed about the context of that two-year-old's understanding of work. My 16-year-old, she says, uh, mom, I want you to go to the thing. I can't, I have a shoot this weekend that's going to keep me out of the house until Sunday. My 16-year-old does not want to know, well, what kind of shoot? What company is it for? Exactly what are you, are you going to be doing pretty girls first and then is there going to be video? Absolutely not. No interest. And there's no level of appropriateness in which I would share that with her. Um, if she, you know, we did have a conversation, I am going to start to be putting more explicit work on the internet. We need to block each other. Um, we need to be aware that some people may find out information about me and they may try to bully you. Do you have any questions about it? How can we work through this? Even in that conversation, I have still not shared with her 
who I shoot with, how I shoot, what positions I shoot with, how much the content is sold for, what websites it's, it's on. My 20 year old, our conversations have matured as she has matured. We can talk about adult toys. We can talk about, we could even talk about what sites I find are problematic that maybe her and her partner want to steer clear of. Um, but it's appropriate, she's an adult now. So, you know, I just, I, I think when we normalize the conversation, I, I appreciate you asking me to continue having this conversation on your show for your audience, um, other moms in the industry. If we normalize it and we kind of ask people like to look for examples of how much your parents shared about their work problems um, and how that had an impact or didn't have an impact on you, we could use those exact same, same examples when it comes to porn. Uh, it's just kind of like, it's my secret service job. I think the biggest thing, the issue is mostly is just the shame that society places that people feel about porn and they feel about the adult industry because, you know, my mother was a pornographer and so I grew up the, the child of pornographers and people, you know, always ask me, well, you know, when did you find out and how did that affect you as a child? And like, it really didn't, like my parents were always open and honest with me about it. I mean, you know, I didn't know specifics when I was young, like you said, I, I think I remember my parents telling me like, you know, we make movies for grownups and it's for grownups and you're not a grownup. So this is not like, you know, stuff that we're going to show you And the office is not a place for for children, it's only for grownups. And I was like, okay, it's for grownups, you know? Um, and, you know, for me, I had a wonderful childhood. I had parents who loved me. I had parents who supported me, who believed in me, um, who spent time with me. And that's really all children want. That's it. I think that if you can just like support and love your child, like what you do for a living is, is not going to turn them into like this psychopath, deviant monster that like can't handle society like it's just that's such a and it's interesting now that I have a daughter mm -hmm. because I'll get that same question well aren't you worried about your kid and I'm like no because I was raised by parents who do the exact same thing that I do and like mm -hmm. it didn't change me and you know people might say oh well you work in the adult industry you know you kind but that's of not a bad thing the same. it's not a bad thing but also too i can point to the fact that my brother's a lawyer and my sister's a doctor i'm sorry my sister's a nurse so like totally have nothing to do with the adult industry and they also love my parents we're all incredibly close um and that was just because my parents loved supported and spent time with us. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode and go check out all the other videos. I film every single one of my podcasts. And if you wanna to listen to the audio version, I'm on iTunes and all the other podcast platforms. Visit hollyrandallunfiltered.com to find out more.